What's up, guys? It's your boys, Awoki, back at it with some more of the Chris Watts. I, I don't know even to call this, it's not a saga, but it's the deepest hole ever that is out there for murder cases. And with that being said, somehow, some way, apparently, the FBI has released new evidence in this Chris Watts case. I've been seeing some channels that have been saying it's it's new new uh, evidence, it's garbage, it's completely the same thing. I have no idea what to believe, so we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and see what's going on. So with that being said, before we go any further, if you guys could do me a solid favor, is subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting the white bar icon down the bottom right. Hit the bell icon next to it, so I do post videos like this one. You guys will get that little ring notification that's Wilkie myself has posted that video. So you guys can watch, comment, like, and share. And again, thank you guys so very much for the blessed support you guys have been showing on this channel every single day i can't thank you guys enough you guys are absolutely killing it we're almost at 50k we got another i think 16 something thousand to go and i would like to give one of you guys those meta quest uh headsets for free by christmas so we got to get there by next week but what i'd like you guys to do as well is go to j is for justice i have uh messaged her hopefully i get a message back but um so we can clob together but this woman is what we're gonna be watching today in her dissecting of this new evidence supposedly we're gonna look at the recaps we're gonna look at the fbi documents um we're gonna take a look at the notes of the second confection because they did go back and talk to chris the second time at the jailhouse or the prison house um the first time obviously he stated that he or she took the lives of the girls at the house which was untrue completely. Um, in this document, apparently it is completely shown that the girls were alive when they went out to survey 319. But again, there's other YouTubers out there. Not, there's, it, I mean, there's a split right down the middle of people that believe Chris is the, ba the bad guy. There's people on this side that think that Shanae is the bad guy. And then there's people over here that think somebody else did it. Again, I'm not a professional. I am not anywhere stating that I am uh, an expert at this, but I'm putting my two cents in. I'm trying to investigate as much as I can, read up on it, watch up on it, listen to up on it. So again, this is for educational purposes only, but I want to see results for Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico. And that result is Chris behind bars forever, which we already know, but also Nicole K Kessinger, which hopefully there's something in here about her. I doubt that. But again, I have, I, I've looked at a few of the things when it comes to what is changed and what is not changed. doesn't really look like much of a difference, but I want to see what Jay is for justice says. Um, if you guys have been to her channel, make sure you guys go over and give her some love. She's at 92.6 thousand subscribers. Let's see this woman get to a hundred K. But with that being said, let's get a video. The Confessions. What are we doing here? So it sounds like, I mean, it feels like to me. So this is the recap of the first one. We're not going to take a look at that. You guys already know what's going on. He murdered his family. Obviously, this is when they pretty much mentioned that, hey, yeah, you did it. Guess what? You're going to prison. Signed, sealed, delivered. But, again, there's more t to this. So, take a look. Okay, so this is all the new stuff. Seeker for six months? So glad you stopped seeking other channels, Jams. All right, so we've got Federal Bureau of Investigation. FBI. Here we go. A lot of it is redacted. Which is Welcome, removed. Uh, Colleen Casey from the Netherlands. Federal Bureau of Investigations, Denver. 8-16-2018. This is three days <laughs> after... Um, Shanann and the girls were And this was missing. just released. They were reported missing on the 13th of August. This is dated the 16th of August. So we have um, a lot of redactions, of course. So you're going to see a lot of that throughout these documents here because I don't know why they won't give us all of it, but they won't. So it says case ID number 7ADN2970827, Shanann Watts, Frederick, Colorado, missing, abducted mother and children. 
That's a lot of stuff removed, man. On 8-14-2018, Frederick Police Department contacted the Fort Collins Residency Agency in regards to Shanann Watts' date of birth, 11084, who had been reported missing by blank the prior afternoon. We know that to be Nicole Atkinson. Shanann is 15 weeks pregnant and also missing are her two daughters, ages three and four. Blank has been interviewed blank and then it's all blank i don't know why it's all blank but it is fpd has requested fbi assistance in attempting to locate shanann and their two children it is requested that the case be opened and assigned to special agent blank of the fcra why was he removed now if we go to the next page blank um, collected item log. This is where it gets interesting, folks. Okay. It's a lot interesting. Evidence entry recorded. Interview of blank. And I believe this is Chris Watts' boss. Okay. This is on 8-20-2018. His boss, Luke Apple, was interviewed by the FBI. So a lot of this is blanked out. Collected from special agent blank. We don't even know the special agent who did this. So this is Denver. Recorded interview of blank on August 15th, 2018. So two days after Shanann and the girls went missing, they interviewed what I think is probably Luke Apple, which is Chris Watts' boss at Anadarko Oil. That's who I think they're they're talking about. I love that they sent him a fire letter, <laughs> a termination letter. Um, collected by blank, non-custodial interview, media type, digital disc. But why did so they have to redact all this stuff? Cut out. Why? Um, blankety blankety blank was interviewed at the Frederick Police Department after being advised of the identity of the interviewing agent and the nature of the interview blank provided the following information look at this boom I can believe it completely blank 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 blankety blank they're pretty much getting to the point where like this never even I happened teen in frederick colorado in person blank was interviewed on the place of employment now we have someone else interviewed here and i don't know Who this could be. Let's read it. It's a guy. So it says blank was interviewed at his place of employment. Anadarko Petroleum Corporation. 501 North Division Boulevard. Platteville, Colorado. Agent blank Colorado, Colorado Bureau Investigation was also present during the course of the interview. After being advised of the identities of the interviewing agents and the nature of the interview, blank provided the following information. Blank of Anadarko's Operations Center. He is familiar with Blank, but Blank recommended interviewing agents speak with Blank and other coworkers for additional information regarding Blank. Chris. Anadarko maintains approximately 1,200 to 1,500 wow, oil batteries or oil production sites in a geographical area generally constrained by Greeley to the north, Interstate 470 to the south, Interstate 76 to the east, and Interstate 25 to the west. That's a lot of batteries. <laughs> These sites vary between exploration and production, E and P. We're learning a little bit about Anadarko. Which we really don't care about to an extent. Mid and midstream. Midstream sites are manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week so they don't need cameras so it's interesting now we find out that there's three different types of sites that anadarko has exploration production and midstream sites midstream sites are man 24 are 24 7, a day. 7 monitored okay they're probably or manned, bigger rather. e and p sites are further divided into vertical and horizontal sites Vertical sites are the older type of the two, 
and blank worked as a blank. Why take that out? Here's where your comment comes in handy, Rome. Batteries are not typically access controlled beyond simple secured gates. These locking mechanisms do not keep a log Dang. of access times or persons accessing the sites. So they have no way of monitoring who's going in and out and what time they do it. Of the gate. That's kind of crazy, huh? So it's they never kind of were sad. able to find that. So if they were to try to find out when Chris Watts went there, there w- they would have had no way of figuring that out. But it says there some newer facilities may monitor access in and out of and have cameras. Half of it's redacted because these are things that his defense would have used in a trial. Exactly. Why are they removing they it now? Been like, you can't prove when Mark when our client w- went to work. You can't prove when he was there, when he left. Someone else could have done it. Yada, yada, yada. So it's just interesting. Any little nuggets we can get that are new. So um, some newer facilities may monitor access in and out and have cameras, but most sites do not maintain records of entry or exit of personnel. Somebody needs to figure out where Survey 319 vertical was. Vertical sites newer are or old? generally managed by exception. Operators maintaining vertical sites are given a number of wells to maintain. Which Chris and was. And these sites are typically seen approximately every few days to once a week in order to ensure proper function. Operators work different types of shifts. Some may work seven days on, seven days off, or eight days on and six days off. A typical workday may be 10 hours or more. Anadarko work trucks are equipped with GPS Which we monitoring. But what about inside? Blank there's... was not sure of the frequency. Because there was a lot of people that were speculating that the GPS, they had like something with the seats where they could tell like weight and stuff like that, which I could, I could see them wet weighing the back of the seat. But somebody mentioned that they could see how much weight it was in the truck entirely. I don't know if that's a complete hundred percent, but that's what they were trying to use that saying that there was somebody else in the passenger seat. There was somebody in the back seat. So it's got GPS monitoring, but it doesn't have like weight monitored monitoring. In which the GPS updates <coughs> in relation to a vehicle's location, but he believed it may update every one to 10 minutes. Anadarko uses a service called Geotab. Okay. This service tracks information to include, but not limited to, seatbelt use, hard acceleration, and deceleration and speed. So not weight of the person in the seat. Work truck use is limited to work-related facts. So they, well, if somebody used a seatbelt, then you can honestly know that somebody was in a seatbelt. Or tasks. Operators also utilize a messaging application called Group Me to send and receive messages to other crews and operations center regarding tasks, locations, and other work-related information. Group Me is typically accessed by employees' work telephones. Okay, I'm reading some of your comments. I see what you're saying. This is an old case. This case is old. This yes. is new. This is new. This, this just ne- came out like, what, two days ago? Never seen before. This was never heard before. So what well, we did was we played Chris's first confession, which... So I think the this is still old to an extent i think that they redacted a whole bunch of things i don't know if they changed anything but it definitely makes you think though very much so yes is old but this information is new and dorley i just explained it right 
every case is relevant. Do you want to know why they're relevant? Because they have victim attack, victim victims attached to them. Yes. So it's relevant in our world here. So we, so sit down. It's like I, it's like I always say: Are we going to forget about World War II, the Holocaust, how many millions of people died? Are you going to forget about that and not want justice on that? I mean, obviously, we can't do any justice because Hitler is gone and stuff like that. But we're not going to forget about it. They're always investigating new things and stuff that come up all the time with the Holocaust or things that happened in World War II or not even just World War II. All, all these mass murders and school shootings and, and different murder cases and murder mysteries and missing people. They're always looking at these things. It's not just this case. It's thousands of cases that are looked at, worked on, uh, wars and uh, attacks. And I mean, look at 9-11. Are we going to stop looking at that? They they still look into the, the attacks of 9-11 that the, the possible uh, towers were rigged with explosive of, of thermite and that it was an inside job in America rather than just showing off that the Taliban is the ones that attacked us. Are we going to stop looking at that? It's just people just want to be like, it's done. It's over with. Get over it. We're not done. We're not going to get over it. We're going to continue looking into this stuff. These people are looking at these uh, cases all the time. Cold cases are reopened. Other cases, murder mysteries, they're reopened to investigate with new technology. It's like there's people out there that just don't care anymore. It's like we care. That's why we watch this and dissect it and looked at it. And it, we try to come up with more evidence and more uh, things that are right or wrong. And it's like, people, calm down. If you don't like what you're, you're seeing, don't watch us. <laughs> if you don't like it, watch something else. Shut up and hold on. I like what she We're says. Moving on. Shut up and go away. Who is Roro? Writer, Special Agent Blank with the Federal Bureau of Investigation is Computer Analysis Response Team. CART Tech Certified. I want to be CART Tech Certified. Can someone CART? I, I want to do that. <laughs> and he didn't want the girls to have to see their mom. But see, I don't think, again, that they took her out the front. Because I've watched it over and over and over again. And I don't see him carrying out a heavy person in the front. You can see the girls because you can see the little shadow. He goes and picks them up. But you never see her in big. That's why. And then the camera that he had on the house is missing from the back. But why would you do that if you took her out the front? That's why I'm so confused. So he covered her head with a garbage bag. Why? And he also just covered her with a garbage bag so they wouldn't have to see her but he states in that confession that cc not only saw her being drugged down the stairs because he lost his grip that's that's chris's words but can we believe every him? time i listen to his five hour confession i hear something new yeah every time so it says here, if you watch it too, you listen to him. How he said, we dug the hole. We buried her. Why would you say we, I literally heard it the other day, two days ago. I watched it. He said, we buried her. Who's we? Your seatbelt use is one of the cues that it picks up on. So they would know if they went. So those girls were not dead when they left the house is my point. I'm just going to say he it. tried, but th Those was unsuccessful girls were alive. That second confession is the truth. This motherfucker. Excuse the French. Let his four year old. See him drag his wife. He tried to carry her. He wrapped her in a sheet because she defecated on the bed. He ended up throwing the sheet away, but he wrapped her up <coughs> and he tried to carry her. And in his words, she slipped out of his grip. And when she slipped out of his grip, he proceeded to drag her down the steps. Which I think he didn't take her down. Thump, 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 thump. 
And then he states in his own words that he believes that's what woke up little Cece. So you're going to tell me if that happened, there's got to be DNA all over those steps. Why do we not do DNA on the steps? Right, because Bella woke up from the fighting. Bella woke up and saw her mother laying there dead with her eyes open, bloodshot. He also said her, her eyes were bloodshot. Shanann's were. That's what little Bella saw, and it just absolutely makes me sick. So then you have him dragging Shanann down the stairs. Each stair wakes up little Celeste. So little Celeste gets up. Bella's up. He's putting her in the truck, and he said that his little girls walked around the house. They were just walking around aimlessly. And I, I sat here, and I listened to it, and I was like. But can we believe a word he says? What could those girls have possibly be doing? I picture a three- and four-year-old. They're probably looking out the window. I picture a three and four year old in a home because Bella was really smart and really had, you know, good intuition. And he kept telling her, oh, mommy is going to be okay." Sick. You're dragging her mom down the steps. And there's a thump every time. And that little girl knew her mom wasn't okay. It's just so sick. What would a three and four year old be walking around the house doing? What do you do? I mean, you're too young to call anyone because you don't. know. So this is the. OK, so we're going to read through this. I am um, I'm not going to look at chat because I'm going to get through this. I'll read your comments. I'll take a break and read your comments. <coughs> On February 18th at 745 a.m., I, Tammy Lee, along with FBI agent Graham Coder and Frederick Police Department Detective Dave Baumhover arrived at the blank. So they redacted where he was he's housed. The purpose for our visit to the blank was to interview Christopher Lee Watts, 5-16-1985. Concerning the murder of his pregnant wife and daughters, as well as to discuss other individuals who claimed to have an affair with Watts during his marriage. Which was like four other people coming out. That Trent and then the other girl and then there was two others. So let's scroll down here. He stated that it was only Nicole. On February February 18th, 2019 at 7.45 a.m. Oh, we already read that part. Okay. Um... The purpose for our visit was to interview Chris Watts. Here we go. In addition, information was provided during the investigation to suggest Watts may have had additional affairs during his marriage to Shanann with a man named Trent Bolt and a female named Amanda McMahon. There she is. Watts was unable to be interviewed about Bolt and McMahon prior to being moved out of the state. By the Colorado Department of Corrections. I don't think he was so with any of those. So they also say in their second interview that like we're here because that went so fast and we didn't get a we chance need to more. ask you any questions. So Chris was really shuffled out of there. It was way too fast. I've seen. Upon arrival to the prison, we were escorted like into a large open room. Years. Which the staff referred to as the computer room. The room contained empty cuticles with chairs, no computers, which lined the walls. We activated our covert digital recording devices and also used several covert video recording devices. Where's that? They have video of the confession. I want to see this. I want to see that. See it. Yes. Why can't we see the video of Chris Watts confession? I don't get it. Watts was brought into the room a short time later, and we asked him if he remembered us. Watts looked puzzled for a brief second and then indicated he recalled who we were. We asked Watts how he was doing, and he said good and asked how we were doing. Yeah, let's unpack Trent Bolt, Mark. Okay. 
why would why would they want to ask him about that unless they believe Trent Bolt? I don't really believe the whole Trent Bolt thing. Why would they if they didn't if they didn't excuse me believe Chris Watts? Why would they even ask him about it? Exactly. And travel to Wisconsin to do it. Yeah. I call BS on the trend. Watts, if there was something he didn't want to talk about, that was okay. Coder told Watts to tell us if he needed to take a break at any point. Watts said he enjoyed being in the blank prison much more than the Weld County Jail in Colorado. Yeah, because probably knew him more. Watts said he was in jail in Colorado. When he was in jail in Colorado, other inmates would constantly yell at him from their cells. Giving Watts advice on how he could kill himself in his oh. cell. And what the other inmates would do to him, given the chance. Yikes. Watts said everyone in the jail knew him and why he was there. Watts explained the jail had to lock down all the inmates just for him to walk down the hallway. Wow. Watts said he never actually saw any of the other inmates, but he could hear them yell at him. Watts said he has been able to call his father, mother, and sister. Since he's been incarcerated, Watts said he isn't sure what his parents were going to say at his sentencing, or he wasn't sure, and he didn't expect them to be present since they had just returned to North Carolina. Coder asked Watts if we could start to ask him questions, and Watts said, go ahead. Coder asked Watts if he knew the case was a national story, and Watts said, Watts said he learned it was after his attorney Watts said he received numerous letters with no return addresses. Sorry. But he was only allowed to read them and could not keep the letters in his cell. Watts said there was a person who lived in Broomfield, Colorado, who wrote him four times a week and wanted to come visit him. Watts said he had people write to him that told him he was a monster. I should look at those. Trent Bolt. Coder explained the investigation revealed numerous people who claimed to have known, dated, or had sexual relationship relations with him. Coder asked Watts if he had heard about the people claiming to have had affairs with him, and he said yes. Watts said his attorney, John Walsh, told him a male from Wyoming named Trent Bolt claimed to have an affair with him. Coder explained Bolt's claims, and Watts denied knowing or having a relationship with Bolt. Watts said he was shown a picture of Bolt by his attorney, and he did not recognize him. Watts claimed he had never been to Wyoming and indicated he had never had any gay experiences or interests in the past. Watts said Bolt claimed to have met him on an application called WhatsApp. Girl Next Door, I'm well, well aware. I've never read this summary breakdown. That's why I'm watching this, because I've never heard of all this. With regard to a man, <coughs> man, Detective Boomhauer asked Watts about Amanda. Watts said he didn't know Amanda. Detective Baumhauer showed Watts a picture of McMahon's driver's license on his cell phone. Watts advised it was the same photograph shown to him by his attorney, Walsh. Watts said Walsh explained McMahon claimed to have a rendezvous in a Chick-fil-A parking lot. Nothing says Watts awesome. said he had only been to one Chick-fil-A in Colorado, and it was in Broomfield off Highway 7. We asked Watts if he wanted to see Bolt and McMahon charged with a crime. If it was warranted, he said no. What crime? I'm sure he wouldn't because they'd probably be able to prove that he communicated with these two. By the way, I don't think those two people were lying. But I also, what are the, what is those two's, those two people? Why does it matter about their involvement? That's what that's. Like, who cares about Trent? And I'm not saying, I shouldn't say who cares about them, but I'm just saying they're not part of this investigation when it comes to involvement of the murders. I mean, they probably were taken advantage of or whatever have you, but hook him up to a lie detector. Why can't we hook up everybody to a lie detector? They do it on Steve Wilkos. They do it on Maury. Why not hook these people up to lie detector tests? Watts said there are always people who take advantage of situations and they 
Bolt and McMahon need to look into themselves and figure out why they did it. Yeah, because that's normal. That's a normal reaction. When you have a dude saying that he had uh, sexual relations with you, that's normal. And you probably don't want to be he needs to just exploited on being figure out why he did it. Bisexual. Okay. I want to get into Nicole Kessinger here. Okay. Watts said he did not believe charging them with a crime would do any good. <laughs> probably wouldn't. With regard to Watts relationship. So you're telling me you can try them with a crime, but you can't try Nicole Kessinger for a crime? That makes no sense. With Nicole Kessinger. Here we go. The mistress. Coder asked Watts if he felt comfortable telling us if he had affairs with other people. And Watts said yes. Watts told us he only had an affair with Nicole Kessinger. Coder asked Watts if he ever had any one night stands. And he said no. Why did they ask him when they were hooked up to a life? Oh, I know. You have a guy who just drug his wife down the stairs in front of their children. And he's telling Trent Bolt he needs to look within himself. <laughs> it's like shaking an eight ball, Chris Watts. Ask Chris Watts a question. Look within yourself and ask again. What a joke. Somebody not- in Washington with more than five brain cells. Need- <laughs> he doesn't have more than five. So we had a gas meter. Some of the Kessinger to have it fixed. He kit to each other a few times in the office and would chat about work. Yeah, okay. On the fourth time meeting Kessinger, he mentioned we moved from North Carolina. Kessinger asked him what he meant by we took out his cell phone and showed her a picture of his daughters. Also set a picture of Shanann on his lock screen. So wait, okay. So if she said that she didn't know about Shanann, she didn't know what she looked like. She just knew that he was, she was the, the wife and stuff like that. But she could see that Shanann was on the lock phone, which probably pissed Sh- uh, Nicole off. Kessinger knew he was married and had children, yet she lied in the interrogation saying she didn't know that. She knew she had kids, but they thought they were getting divorced. Or she thought they were getting divorced, which there was no inkling about it on online. He know uh, Kessinger lied and said he didn't know he was married. Kessinger was trying to save. Kessinger was trying to save face. The hell does that mean? He was talking, not talking to Kessinger since the arrest. He hopes Kessinger hasn't written to him in a different alias, and he does not recognize. Okay. I don't remember this either, that he, this part about Kessinger. Yeah, I don't remember this either. Okay, so Kessinger asked him about what he meant by we. Okay, we already talked, looked at that. Welcome home. Okay, do, 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 do. He didn't wear a wedding ring at work because it was getting sized since he was getting, or it was too big after he lost the weight. Which we already knew. Nicole Kessinger texted him w- one day when he was working in the field, and their text messages to each other continued. Blah, 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 blah. Kessinger refused to speak to Watts' attorney. Why? He hoped Kessinger found normalcy because uh, Anna Darko was her dream job. With regards to if he loved Kessinger, I felt like it was true. Hmm, interesting. Bandamir Speedway. Look at this. It's a racetrack. This is where those two idiots were. These two idiots. But look how pretty it is. I mean, in all honesty, it's absolutely... Look at the view. That's pretty big. So every time he opened up his phone and saw the picture of his wife and children, he questioned what he was doing with Kessinger. Yeah, you should probably thought of that. You probably should have thought of that. Every time he was with Kessinger, he felt like he didn't think. And there was blinders in his face. Yeah, because you're thinking with this head instead of this head. He has pictures of his wife and daughter in prison cells, and he talks to them every morning and every night. Well, you could have talked to them face to face. He has a book in his cell, which he has the same book he used to read to Celeste. He reads the book to his daughters, 
along with some scriptures every night. He wished it never happened and he never had a blinder over his eyes and could have seen what was going on. He did. He did. He stayed at Kessinger's house almost every night with his wife. Wait. He stayed at Kessinger's house almost every night his wife and daughters were in North Carolina. Because he knew that there was surveillance at the house. So that's why they went to Kessinger's. So it could be incognito. Plus he had cameras on the outside. He felt like he didn't have time at home to think about his marriage when Shanann and the girls were out of state. Yeah, because he's too busy shacking it up with uh, Kessinger. He slept over at Kessinger's every, almost the entire month of July. Being away from the home allowed him to not think about being a father, husband, because he wasn't surrounded by the reminders of his family. He wished he had met Kessinger at work and kept it as a work relationship only. It feels like a roller coaster ride that I just keep punching a ticket on and never can get off. Hmm. Uh, Kessinger wanted to have sex all the time. He never had to worry about saying something stupid around Kessinger, which he felt like he was open. Kessinger made him feel like he asked him if he had ever strayed away before, but she told her no. He told Kessinger he felt like he. Yeah, her. He told Kessinger that he felt like she had a leash on him and she had able to put, tug him away from Shanann. Hmm. With regards to Watts' relationship with Shanann, Watts explained his first date with Shanann, said he was her type. Watts said he always pursued Shanann and always helped organize her medications inside her pillbox. Watts said he went to help or went to Shanann's colonoscopy a few months after they got together and she told him she knew he was a keeper after he went his mother was always always hesitant about shenan he was the baby of the family and never had a girlfriend in high school he moved out of the house okay blah 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 uh he met shenan when he was 25 years old the longest relationship he had before shenan was approximately six months he is more reserved and goes with the flow He felt Shanann stringing around in bed and he felt like she knew he was having an affair. He had used his credit card when he was out with dinner, idiot, Kessinger because he didn't have another Anadarko gift card and couldn't ask Kessinger to pay. So go to the flipping ATM machine and take some money out. I'm not endorsing cheating, but I'm just saying. Shanann started rubbing her hand on his leg and chest and they had blank. I don't think they blanked. Um, I just don't think that they did, but I think that they're, she was trying to Watts denied her. That's when she was like, what's going on? What happened? Blah, 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 blah. Um, they, they had this blank. Uh, had, he felt strange when he had blank with Shanann and questioned who he was and who he had become having blank with Shanann may have been a trigger point or like, you hit the button on a bomb and it just blew up. Why would it matter? So all this stuff is not redacted, but like important keywords. When he woke up that morning, he got ready for work and returned, or he then returned to bed and woke up Shanann to talk. Shanann was sleeping face down and rolled over onto her back to talk to him. He felt like he had something to say to Shanann. He straddled Shanann on the bed around her waist. He believed Shanann initially thought he wanted to have blank with her again since he was on top. Shanann told him he was hurting the baby. He and Shanann talked for about 15 to 20 minutes with him straddling on top of her. He was convinced Shanann knew about the affair and she and the kids wouldn't be there. Okay, here we go. He felt like uh, going out Saturday evening. Oh, 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 oh. He asked Shanann if they could cancel their couple's trip to Aspen. He asked Shanann if they could move to uh, Burtonton, Colorado, so they could get away from their house. He felt like going out on Saturday evening with Kessinger and using their credit card was going to be the last straw. 
Shanann told them she knew that there was somebody else and cried. He denied having the affair. Of course he would. He felt nervous around Shanann and felt like he couldn't. You could have talked to her. She wrote you letters. Shanann asked him about last night. He had taken off her bra and didn't wash her face before going to bed. Blah, blah, blah. For 30 minutes. He doesn't want to know what Shanann saw when she looked back at him while he was strangling her. Watts denied covering Shannon's head or face with anything when he blanked her. Shanann never fought back or screamed. I highly doubt that. I think she fought. That's why he had rub marks on his neck. People say that they don't see it. I see it. I'm sorry, but he does not know why Shanann didn't fight back. He believes that Shanann may have been praying. That I believe. He read the Bible that said, forgive these people for they do not know what they do. And maybe Shanann was saying that in her head at that time. When he was asked to take off his shirt so he could check for defense wounds, he knew immediately he didn't have any because Shanann never fought back. Yeah, there was nothing on the body, but I swear that thing on her... He does not recall Shanann's arm being pinned down by his knees. I feel like it's back in my head was going to, I feel like, oh, so I, they say you wouldn't plan it, but and just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like that. What happened? I wish I could have let go. Time seemed to stand still and he saw his life disappear before his eyes, but he couldn't let go. Yeah. Cause he done messed up. He, uh, he felt like he was enraged and snapped. His attorney mentioned the crime of strangulation was passionate and he doesn't understand how he could be passionate. That morning, a new type of fight. There was an emotion at first, um, more anger that anybody else uh, was to love there. I think it was more anger of desperation from her. Shanann knew something was, wasn't right. She wanted to fix it. After Shanann was gone, he didn't know what was happening and felt like it was a traumatic event. He was shaking and didn't know what had happened. He didn't know what to do and thinking that he had done. He wasn't in the right state of mind and wasn't in control of his thoughts or actions. This is where the whole dark entity being that he mentioned that was apparently happening to him, which he blames on uh, Nicole. So definitely interesting there. People asked him why he didn't call 911, but no one knows what they would do in that same... I mean, I would have killed my spouse, I can tell you that. I think it was more... Yeah, this is just highlights. He told Bella may have been woken up by the noise. He told Bella, Mommy, don't feel good. Bella thought Shanann was sleeping. He wrapped Shanann face down in the bed sheet, was, which was recovered at the oil site. Shanann was still wearing her shirt, bra, and underwear she had on when she got into bed. He tried to carry Shan Shanann down the stairs and lost his grip. <coughs> and then I'm having to pull her down the stairs. Bella watched him drag her down the stairs. I mean, again, why are we believing this now when we didn't believe him to be four when he said that Shanann took the girls, but they didn't. It was the girls that were still alive because apparently he tried to do them there and they didn't work. And it, yeah. Bella never touched Nan or tried to wake her up. Bella followed him down the stairs. Oh my gosh. Even to think about that, just. He then returned inside. Celeste was in her room and was starting to get off the bed. He believed the noise of the Shanann's feeling hit this drag of the stairs. And he may have woken up Celeste. See, that's the thing. Being a dad was the best part of his life. He took it away. So why are the people stating that he is going to get out? He's the, like, he shouldn't have pictures of the, his family anymore. He felt like somebody else had control over him that day and he wasn't able to fight. There comes that dark entity again. Um, when he, the prosecutor said Bella bit her tongue repetitively, he wanted to bang his head up against the wall.
he didn't feel like he deserved to live or be on the earth after what happened. After everything happened, he considered taking his own life as well, but he wanted to spend it with Nicole. He did not commit blank because he felt like if he did it out of the oil site, he may have ended up hurting more people than just himself. No, I don't believe that for a second. He knew that there are other people in the area and didn't want something to catch fire or blow up. So the, so that did, that was one of the plans was that he was going to blow up the, the site, but then apparently didn't want it to, I think Nicole Atkinson foiled his plan on blowing it up. That's what I think, but I could be wrong. Um, was I even a dad at one point? I don't even know. He wanted his whole life to be a dad and nothing made sense, including the oil tanks. Because it didn't happen. He wasn't the one that did the oil tanks. During the ride, the girls were dozing on and off and held each other's hand. And laid in each other's laps. During the ride, Bella said, Daddy, it smells. Because it's probably because Shanann... When he got to the oil site, he took Shanann out of the back of the truck and pulled her over and laid her on the... See, that's what doesn't make sense. If he pulled her out of the back of the truck, but he stated too that he put her, put her at the bottom of the back of the truck where the girls had their feet on top of her. But now he's saying that he pulled her out of the back of the truck, like the bed, where she was ultimately buried. Bella and Celeste were sitting in the back of the truck where he had removed Shanann. Okay, so... He removed her out of the back of the truck, not the, the bed, which I don't. Mm. Celeste had a blue Yankee blanket and he put it over her head. He blanked Celeste in the back of the seat. He put his hand over her mouth and nose over the blanket and then other hand around in front of Celeste's neck. Bella was seated right beside and strangled her, but Bella didn't say anything. I'm pretty sure Bella fought. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Celeste did too. He had no idea how long it took to blank uh, Celeste because he had no concept of time. With regards to what he was thinking of time, I wasn't, if I was thinking this wouldn't have happened or partial a hint. He believed it was tight when he put blank through the hatch of the oil. He did not have to blank or hit Celeste into the tank, because, but may have had to Manipulate her to get her inside. Gosh. This is definitely hard to read. When he got into the truck, Bella asked him what happened to Cece. So Cece was first. Bella asked him in her soft voice, is the same thing going to happen to me as Cece? He is not sure if he told Bella yes, like a horrible person. He then put the same Yankee blanket over Bella's head and did the same. But again, all of this is not redacted. All the other stuff is redacted. He noticed a couple of spots over Bella's eyes when he picked her up. He walked Bella up to a separate oil tank, opened the hatch, and dropped her feet first. Bella seemed to harder... Yeah, because she was bigger. Because he... I, I think they said that he dislocated her shoulder. But we don't know if it's he. Again, why were there... No fingerprints done to the tanks for the doors and stuff, the latches. He does not know why he put Bella and Celeste in separate oil tanks. Bella and Celeste were not alive when he put them in the tank. But the question is, too, I think Bella is the one that had oil in her inside, which makes me believe that she was breathing a little bit and then she ingested some of it. That's just my belief. When he put Bella into the oil tank, he returned to where Shanann was located. He had not, uh, Shan was not blank or bleeding or cut when he buried her. Somebody told me that she had the baby, like the baby came out. Cause that's why there was blood on the sheets. He recalled Shan's eyes were bloodshot. Shanann had no partial given birth, had not partially given birth when he buried her on the ground. Then where did the blood come from? Shanann was wearing a shirt and blue collared underwear. 
Every time he closes his eyes, he hears Bella say, Daddy, no. He hears it every day. I hope that haunts him for the rest of his life. Just think about the oil tanks makes him want to throw up. Which, there was throw up there, but they never DNA tested it. Frank Ruzek said at his sentence that he was trying to separate everyone, and that was not true. He felt like somebody, someone else was in control of what he was doing. That's just a cop out. Um, with regards to the trash bags found at the oil site, he didn't want his girls looking at Shanann in the back seat of his truck, so he placed one bag over her feet and the other one around her head. The girls didn't know what was going on. I think they did. After the murders, the Yankee blankets was still in his truck and he threw it away. He stopped by a construction dump in his neighborhood and threw away his clothes and his Yankee blanket on his way home from work on Monday. He kept extra boots and clothes in his work truck, which he changed into after the murders. He felt like he, like taking Celeste and Bella's lives was caused by anger with Shanann that he took everything in front of him that morning. I don't think it was that. So I call it BS. Okay, so he is not sure if Shanann coached him or not, referring to how Watts treated his family, curse out his mother, did things to his family he never thought he would do. I don't know if I had something to do with it. Something inside me just triggered, blaming blank. His mother and Shanann never got along. Well, get over it. Agreed on anything. His mother possibly thought Shanann wasn't good enough. I thought she was definitely good enough. So it's pretty much things. He would never have thought his marriage and relationship to Shanann was bad if he hadn't met Kessinger. He looked outside every day and wonders what he could have been doing with his kids. Yeah. Right now I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old and more likely a one-month-old son and a beautiful wife. And right now it's just me. Yeah. Well, you're done. Screwed up, my dude. Uh, I don't care about these Thrive patches. Yeah, we don't care about the rest, the Thrive patches. So this part, his parents said that they weren't sure they could for ever forgive Shanann. But what? Shanann said the post wasn't direct or at any party, but Shanann had mentioned to the madness. Shanann was convinced his mother tried to blank their daughter by putting nuts in front of Celeste. I mean, that's definitely a big, huge thing. You should know what has nuts or what doesn't have nuts. So that definitely alerts me, but we can't state anything about Cindy on that part. But his mother felt like Celeste's allergy was not serious. After the incident with the nut allergy, Celeste, he didn't speak to his parents until the 6th. His parents said they weren't sure that they could forgive Shanann. <laughs> his parents asked him if he had someone else because they saw him texting someone blank the entire time he was at their house in North Carolina. So they knew. They never fought, but he had to calm Kessinger down a few times. Kessinger got upset when she realized she would always be the other person and he wanted always to put his wife first. The first incident where Kessinger realized he put his wife first was when he left her house on July 4th. He told Kessinger just because he had to leave didn't mean she needed to take a step back. Kessinger told him she thought it was better they didn't see each other the rest of the day. I wonder why. Um, he didn't know Kessinger was dating other people until a few weeks later. Kessinger thought he was different because he would fix things around her apartment for her, which no one had done for her past. Kessinger's friend Jim was her friend for a long time and worked in an oil field. With regarding to selling of his and Shanann's house around the first week of the blank Shanann sent an email to Ann Meadows about selling their home. So they did plan on moving. After a few weeks at the rest, he told his attorneys about everything that happened. His attorneys asked him about a hundred times if he was sure he wanted to take the plea deal. If he didn't take the plea deal, it would have went to trial. Which would have 
possibly brought in Nicole for interrogation, um, which should have happened. Before he walked into the courtroom, his attorneys asked him again if he was sure to take the plea deal. His attorneys never told him he had to take the plea deal, that they had a lot of creative motions to file and were ready to fight. He told Walsh he didn't want him to fight for something where the story wasn't true. See, this is stuff you can't figure out and find out. Uh, his parents told him the night before the plea deal he was pleading again guilty for a reason. His parents had received corresponding from the people all over the world who told them that Thrive Patch wasn't FDA approved. So you're blaming the Thrive Patch now? And can alter someone's mind. Hold the phone. That's all that I, I'm going to look at that. So they're blaming Thrive now? Is that new? His parents still believe he was railroaded and felt pressured to plead guilty. He doesn't feel he was pressured because he, his defense team asked him plenty of times. So his parents are saying that he's innocent, but the other people told him, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? He's the one that stated his parents talked to him about using the defense of CPTSD complex post traumatic stress disorder for being an emotional abusive relationship. He could relate to some of the information, but it doesn't make up for what had happened. He talks to his parents on the phone. They believe there is a chance he could get out of prison. He ain't getting out of prison. You're going to blame the thrive patch. I'm wondering so it says the Thrive Patch can make mental mood changes. But that's, I mean, there's things that make different mood, like Red Bull. Red Bull makes me so irritable. But I'm not going to blame Red Bull if I murdered my family, which I would never do in the first place. He was thinking to be with Nicole. But they're wanting to blame Thrive Patches now? I think that's a hogwash right there. His parents sold his toolbox so they could afford their travel to blank. Why is that redacted? In October 2018, the prosecutors went to Sandy and Frank Ruzek and asked them about a possible plea deal instead of the death penalty. His defense team told them there wasn't enough evidence on certain things and he told the defense team it needed to end. He felt like the attorneys were fair and were similar to the guidance counselor. He felt like he, Watts, was in charge of his own life decisions regarding his case. His attorneys told him that he needed to show more emotions in court so he didn't look like a cold person. Well, he kind of did. His attorneys told him he could look at crime pictures and he refused. He prayed for the hazmat workers and anyone else who had to see the aftermath. He didn't want Sandy to see the, any of the pictures, hear anyone talk about what they saw or hear. See right here. Look. So all those people that sit there and say that Shanann was a horrible mom, abusive mom. Again, we're not believing Chris, but he even states right here. He wanted everyone to know Shanann was a loving wife and, and helpful with and helped everyone. So that kind of con contradicts what people are saying about Shanann being an abusive person and sort of like that when he's saying that she was a loving wife. He remembered we came into the room after his father left and tried to get the true story about him. He wanted to bang his head against the table. He didn't want all of us um, to have to get on the witness stand and testify what he saw. He didn't want everyone to relive what happened. He felt like Shanann's family could start to have closure. He felt like God moved him to blank for a reason. Wisconsin? All the inmates would tell him that to how to blank himself. He didn't blank himself because he felt like he may have a different purpose. Yeah, what? You killed your family. We always, someone to try to coax down. He went to fight in his entire life. He was popular but never bullied. He... He had braces and a Jim Carrey bow cut. 
Okay, we don't care about this. Like looking at the files that I saw that were redacted, everything that was like important is gone now. His addiction, his father immediately changed the subject. His father was coping with the fact that he never came back home. His mother initially believed that his father was having an affair because he couldn't account for missing money. Oh, that's into Ronnie and Chris. His mother always wanted to know how he felt, if there was something wrong. I don't know if growing up that way kept me that way. Deal with things on your own, but they build up so much that you can't deal with them. Take a hold of you, and you never thought it would take a hold of you. Mm. <sighs> but again, there's a lot of things that are not redacted in here. He took off Shanann's wedding ring and put it on. Oh, okay. If he had planned it, he wouldn't have taken her items out of the oil tank site with him. He took Shanann's wedding ring off, put it on the counter. So it looked like she didn't want to fix their marriage and wanted a divorce. But then why did he go to the bedroom and find it there? He threw the therapy book away in the trash so it looked like she believed nothing was working in their marriage. He may have gone down to the basement to get trash bags, motion alarms on the basement door. He does not recall going downstairs to work out that morning. He went in through the garage door opening. He ran upstairs and pretended to look around for Shanann and the girls. Uh, pretend to look around. Atkinson found, found the phone. He threw the sheets to their bed away the day after the murders. When you strangle someone, sometimes they blank. And that occurred with blank. Shanann was the reason why he threw them away. Deadbeat. His father just wanted to talk about sports when he was in the car together. So a lot of this stuff is not like changed. But a lot of things that were redacted for no reason. He did not look good in front of the, the, the camera. I'm telling you what. This pose and all this stuff that he did right here, all oh, just made him. Okay, you don't have anything on you, right? Okay, nothing in your pockets? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and face that other wall behind you. I'm just going to search you real quick. Oh my search god, you did you see me? <laughs> Hold up. Daily Mail always coming through with the good photos. <laughs> Look at. <laughs> We're going to read the rest of it in just a second. Let me. Let me show you this one. Go back to the case files here. With regards of Watts spoke to Kessinger after the murders, he spoke to Kessinger on Monday the 13th. He and Kessinger texted and then spoke on the phone. Kessinger said she believed Shanann took off with the daughters. On Tuesday the 14th, Kessinger kept asking him weird questions throughout the text messages to try and determine if he was really him. Kessinger asked him if his dog's name was and what yoga studio he went to. What? It was possible Kessinger believed Shanann had his cell phone and she was making sure. Oh, so she probably thought Shanann was texting him. Kessinger told him it was the last time he would hear from her and she was going to stay with her friend Jim. Kessinger told him not to contact her until this is done. Kessinger told him to delete everything on his cell phone, which was wrong. He didn't delete everything from Kessinger, and he is not sure why. When he was on vacation in San Diego, he told his friend Mark about Kessinger. So where's Mark? Let's go talk to Mark. Mark had a similar, similar situation occur when he started dating a female who was engaged, and the female ended up cheating on him. Did he kill his family? He never completed or completely opened up on Mark about Kessinger and wished he he did because Mark had not been able to offer him some advice. Yeah, not take your family's life. Um, with regards to Kessinger being directly or involved in the murders, she had her moments where I had talked to her like off a ledge kind of deal. There were no videos of Kessinger recording herself because she was bipolar. 
his father, bipolar, okay, bipolar, just throwing it out there. His father of his attorney told him about a few videos Kessinger made where she was talking about being bipolar. She would get worked up about nothing. Motive? Just saying. Kessinger came out to his house one more time on July 4th, uh, 2018. He was going to come back and he said no. She was pissed off. Around the first week of the August, he told Kessinger he talked to Shanann about separating. So Kessinger started looking for apartments for him. Kessinger knew, never asked him to get rid of his family. His relationship with Kessinger contributed to the murders, but she never asked him to do anything. Kessinger never knew she wanted to have kids, but she told him she wished she could have his first son. Kessinger never knew Shanann was pregnant. BS on that one. It was possible Kessinger saw Shanann was pregnant from Facebook, but Kessinger was never mentioned to him while she saw it. Okay. <clears throat> With regard to the possible, and he named his son after... Oh, right here. Okay. He wanted to spell his son's name Nico, N-E-K-O, but Shanann said no. Nico is an Italian name that Shanann always liked. He did not get to pick any of his children's names, but he told Shanann he liked them. Well, that's kind of stupid, but just saying. Um, with regarding Watts was doing mentally. So he took a mental stability test. He didn't know he was going to blank. So this is where we're starting to see more redactions to again. He didn't know he was going to what when he was DRDC Denver reception and diagnose center. He was put through the ringer. He took 11 separate tests to figure out his IQ. His IQ was 135 or 140. After dining one evening, he told he was told to change his clothes and was put in a van and transported to blank. He got staffed at the prison in probably Wisconsin and hopes to get a job soon which he is a janitor. He is a female he sees at the prison who asked him how things are going and if he needs psych meds. He has declined any psych medication. Most of the men in his unit are on medication. He tries to keep a low profile in prison with regards to food or what food he misses the most. Well, you could have had it if you didn't do anything stupid. Many people asked him about spirit. He had one female write him. He was abusive and couldn't find a relationship with God. He never found that. He had other inmates write him just to ask him if he could send them some scriptures. Can't they? Doesn't everybody get a Bible? Um, with regards as if he never thought he'd fall in love again. No, I don't think that's going to ever happen. I'm not the guy that's down the street. What's his name? Blank. He heard Blank got engaged over a letter and that is pretty insane. He heard one female sent him a letter while he was in Colorado, which included a picture of her inside. He hopes he can have other people that have left him. The, he's, it's not going to take a long time for the guilt to go away. You're going to have it for the rest of your life. Never knew I could have a relationship with God like I do now. It's like the amazing grace with all. Of, I'm glad God is always there. I definitely have a relationship, I feel. But you should have found this before. You would have probably had a great life with your, your kids and your wife. But, of course, you decided to go the other route. He's love wearing the white dress in the picture. The picture of Celeste and Bella he showed him may have become Carolina. Show emotions. So more redactions. What's wanted to happen with the information you provided us? Watts said he figured out we would most likely tell Sandy, Frank, and uh, Frankie about what he said to give them closure said he wasn't sure what he would tell the Rusek family 
that he had no intention on telling anyone what he said outside the law enforcement. Watt said he would appreciate being able to tell his parents uh, about what happened before they heard it from anywhere else. Before the interview was concluded, I asked Watts if he could take a picture of him on file. Watts agreed, and the two pictures I took are attached to this report. And I know you guys are all going to want to support because all of the money that is raised for the Grady Judd. So that being said, guys, I mean, I don't see much of a difference in new evidence. There's a little bit here and there, but the, the evidence that they're stating, it's not going to alter the, the case at all. We already know quite a bit of it to begin with. I mean, reading some of this was definitely hard. Um, but it's more or less with the, them releasing this. It's just showing removal of information that could be used in the future if it was ever opened. So I don't necessarily take this as a win. I don't think this is a loss, but it's not something that should have been released now. Why are they releasing it now? It makes no sense. So... Comment down below, guys, what you think when it comes to this case. For those that are new here, uh, I would definitely, I, I want to hear from everybody, but the people that are new here, um, let me know if you guys, about this case. I would like to know your per, prog, prognosis on this case. Um, I still think Nicole was involved. I think he's protecting her for some, some shape or form. But again, why would that girl go missing off the face of the earth? We can't find her. We can't get a hold of her. Why? I don't think he's ever, he's, he's even said that there's, he's going to go to the grave about certain things, but then for them to sit there and like start blaming thrive for his whole thing. That's a whole nother ballpark. I mean, we've looked at the possibility of witchcraft, which was a whole big, huge ballpark, but <coughs> again, there's things out there that we can't, per se, are real, fake, whatever have you, we still don't know. We're still learning things to this day. But I mean, that's why we're constantly doing this interview or this this uh, case trying to figure out what, what the heck is going on. And I still don't think we have all the answers to our questions. There are questions. It's like a test. When you take a test of 100 questions, we might have 66 questions answered. But what about those other 44 questions? We haven't answered them yet. We can't find the answer. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my reaction and my commentary upon her commentary. Hopefully I'll get to talk to her one day and see her partake on this as well. Um, again, please comment down below your thoughts. Hit the like button for more of these kind of videos. And don't forget to subscribe so we can get to that 50k mark. And I can give one of you guys that virtual reality headset. And we'll see you guys in the next video. So please take care. Keep it safe. And as always, keep nerding on. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.